While Aegon marched on Harrenhal after his coronation, Oris Baratheon had taken most of his forces and his queen Rhaenys with her dragon south to deal with the excuse for the invasion. Argilac the Arrogant, King of the Stormlands. Argilac had his seat at Storm's End, a castle considered the most impregnable in Westeros after Harrenhal. Argilac may have been arrogant, but he wasn't stupid or a coward. His lords advised him to shut his gates and wait out the siege. But he'd heard what had happened at Harrenhal and refused to die a suckling pig cooked in his own castle. He would meet victory or defeat the same way, with sword in hand. He called his banners and marched to meet Oris Baratheon in the field. Thanks to Rhaenys' dragon, Miraxis, Oris knew Argilac was coming, how many men he had, and how fast he marched. So Oris simply seized the high ground and dug in on the hills to wait for Argilac. As the two armies approached, the wind rose to meet them and the rain poured from the sky, a gale which would give the battle its name, the last storm. King Argilac's lords urged him to wait for the weather to die down. But a storm king saw that the rain was blowing into the faces of the Baratheon men on their hills. And Argilac outnumbered the Baratheon host two to one, with four times as many knights and heavy horse. Argilac attacked. Three times Argilac led his knights against the Baratheon line, but the hills were steep and the rain had beat the earth to mud. The war horses foundered and slipped, and the charges collapsed. The battle seemed lost, until Argilac ordered his spearmen up the hill. Blinded by the rain, the Baratheons didn't see them until it was too late. One hill fell, then another, and another, until only one remained in the Baratheon center. If Argilac could break through there, he could split the invading army and flank both halves. Argilac and his men charged, and the Baratheon line broke, revealing Queen Rhaenys and Meraxis. Argilac's vanguard burst into flame, and his men panicked. The victory charge fell into chaos, and Argilac himself was thrown from his horse. But he didn't yield. When Oris Baratheon arrived, he found the old king holding off half a dozen men, another half dozen dead at his feet. Oris dismounted to meet the king on equal footing and offered Argilac one final chance to yield. Argilac cursed him instead. As the storm raged around them, the grizzled old warrior and the bearded upstart fought for life and kingdom. In the end, Argilac got his wish. He died, sword in hand. As word of Argilac's death spread, his lords and knights threw down their swords and fled. Oris and his vanguard rode to Storm's End to claim Argilac's castle for Aegon, only to find the gates barred and the walls manned. Argilac's daughter had assumed his crown, and the new Storm Queen was as fond of yielding as her father. She declared that Oris would win only bones, blood, and ashes here. But her men were weaker than her. And that night, Oris found Argilac's daughter delivered, gagged, chained, and naked to his camp. Argilac had refused to give Oris her hand. Now Oris could have any part of her he wished. But Oris unchained the girl, wrapped his cloak around her, and poured her a glass of wine. He told her he would take the arms, banner, and words of House Darrenden to honor her father's courage in the last storm. Conveniently, Oris had none of his own to discard first. The crowned stag became the sigil of House Baratheon, and storms end their seat. Argilac's daughter would even remain in her home, though as a lady instead of a princess. The Stormlands were now Aegon's, and as tribute, Aegon demanded the swords of the men Oris had defeated. For what purpose? Oris didn't know.